What's up guys, Nate with Fishing Michiana. I'm in my garage. I'm about to take a trip out on a river behind my house. I'll put a little video together. Uh, but before I do that, I wanna show you guys a quick video of my latest purchase. And here it is. This is the Pelican Catch 130 HD, which HD stands for Hydro Drive, which is this bad boy right here. I guess Hobie just recently lost her patent on it, so Pelican picked it up. Basically, it's a pedal drive system. You stick it down in a slot in the center there, just like that, and pedal away, and it does move pretty quick. But I will tell you this, uh, unless you're built like Lance Armstrong, this is an all-day event thing. If you got a short run somewhere, this is the perfect setup, or you got a place you can't access with your big boat. But I'm gonna give you a quick run through this kayak uh, before I get it out and start putting some videos together with it. It's a pretty simple setup. It has a pedal drive out there. It also has a rudder system right here, which you can see on latch. And then to lower this rudder system, excuse my mess here, you simply pull this right here. Oops, wrong one. And then that drops the rudder system down. It's jammed in there pretty tight right now. But that's it, that drops the rudder system down. So then you pull it up, boom, pull it down, boom. So when you're out and you're hitting some shallow water and you want to quick pull your rudder system up, there you go. It's up, it's out of the way. Put it in a slot, lag it down for, uh, for when you're driving it. And then if you want to get these cords out of your way, you simply pull these cords up. Pelican's designed a little keeper here so you don't accidentally drop your rudder down or up. Also, it has Scotty tracks built in from the factory. What I've done is I purchased some gear heads. That's these bad boys right here that go in there. One's got a cleat. For my anchor and the other one you can move your scotty rod holders in there just like that or any other item that you want to put in there pretty easy um the other thing i like about this is the seat this does have a pretty adjustable seat so you can pull it up down strapped in you can remove the seat if you want it has a strap up here that locks it down to the front so you can lock the seat down or remove it and stand up in it if you want it's a pretty stable kayak i'm six foot one 250 pounds and uh, if I can stand up in it, and I'm probably the most uncoordinated person you ever met in your life, uh, I would say it's pretty stable for most people to go out in. Uh, some add-ons I've got, I really like this company, Wilderness. Wilderness seems to sell a lot of kayak stuff. Uh, not the cheapest out there, but so far pretty good quality. So some add-ons I got from Wilderness is I got this little pouch here for carrying case. As I've been out in the kayak a couple times, I realized I do need some stuff to carry. Uh, just like little gear, you know, pliers, you put your phone, stuff like that away. So this thing right here, we can strap it in where we can put it on the back of the seat, on the side, wherever we want to put it. It also got a wilderness plier holder. Again, we can strap this anywhere, put it in where we want on the kayak. Comes with these little bungees right here. You can snap on there. Um, that's nice to have. Any storage on a kayak is nice. Keep your stuff out of the way. Plus, it's easy to haul it around. Also from wilderness, they have this kayak crate. That's this thing right here. Now, this comes with rod holders that you can bolt on the sides uh, and then you can also bolt on the other side as well that works great if you need some extra rod storage this pelican already comes with built-in rod holders all three of these on the back point back and then it's got one on the front to your right there that points forward so what i like about this is it's super easy to open and close quick latch system Pull it open, put your tackle gear up there. For example, this right here is an anchor, believe it or not. This you strap to your kayak cleat and then you can actually in the river or lake, hook this onto a tree branch or root system and that'll hold your kayak. It has a secondary storage in here where I keep my Scotty rod extensions. So we could put the rod holders on the end of this, stick this in a gear head and stick your rods out away from the boat if you want. Another Scotty rod holder, then extra gear I have in there that I may need. Really nice storage, pretty durable. Strap it down with your bungee cords that come with the kayak and this thing isn't going anywhere. I did get an extra paddle just for emergency reasons, also use it as a hand paddle. Another Scotty rod holder on a gear head here. And then also you've got your paddle strap, as most kayaks have. I will say this, the first couple times I went out, I didn't bring the paddle with me because of the pedal drive. It would be nice to take a break from pedal drive and paddle by hand only because it wore my legs out. So I am gonna be bringing the paddle with me from now on. 
It also has a steering system. This is what moves your rudder side to side, so when you're pedaling, you can steer using your rudder there. Now I've also wired in with the gearhead a fish finder. So this is a Garmin. I'll just turn it on for you. And you can see the options with this Garmin. As soon as it loads up here. Traditional, flasher, split frequency, waypoint map, blah, 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 blah. So this does work really well so far. Uh, I've taken it out once with a with it hooked up and I really do like it super easy to read and as far as just seeing the depth and seeing if there's any fish down there this is the perfect little setup here so you notice that I had to turn something on to get the fish finder to turn on and that is this another wilderness product this is a wilderness 15 amp hour so 15,000 amp or 1500 amp I don't know if I'm saying that right battery now this is a lithium battery so this bad boy right here can run this fish finder for over 20 hours and I've used it for about 12 hours and I still had almost all the bars left. So this is a pretty sweet gig. It has a 12 volt output right there which you plug into your fish finder. It has another output right here for USB if you want to plug something in like I have my speaker plugged into here while we're out on the water. Uh, it has another USB 5 volt output, so those both are 5 volt. And then it has your port that you use to charge. Everything is waterproof, so you can seal it up pretty easy with these plugins right here. And then also, it does tell you the state of the battery by how many dots, and it turns off that easy. So, pretty cool stuff. All I did was just I'm not mounting that anywhere, I simply just threw it in my cup holder strap and ran the 12 volt hooked it right up to the 12 volt wire from the fish finder and then i ran the transducer wire down the side here i didn't drill any holes in the bolt i just ran down the side and i did drill a hole in this back port here and then inside this dry port that comes standard on these pelicans it, uh, i took duct seal which is the same putty they use on air duct systems simply stuck the transducer to the bottom of the kayak sealed it up with the duct seal and i did see a video for doing that i was curious as to whether that would work or not as far as reading the bottom and it worked great i had no issues whatsoever read the bottom was able to pick up on the fish pretty sensitive i like it so far the only downside is you, you cannot get water temperature because again that transducer is inside the boat it's not outside the boat but that's okay not the end of the world you can tell if it's hot out or if it's cold out the other addition I've made on here is this bad boy right here. Now this is a wilderness bait well. So as you can see, I have used it. Uh, but this is spring loaded, which I really like. So I can reach back behind the kayak, quickly pull this latch and access it. Now the way this works is you charge this up on the front. And then it also has two five volt USB ports. And essentially what you do is you hit this button right here twice and you can hear it running and then hit it twice again and it turns it off. You can also hold it down for three seconds if you want an intermittent aerator. So the way that this works is actually not an aerator. It's just like a live well on your boat. The way this works is this hose comes out the bottom of this and then goes down through the scupper hole. And a scupper hole are the holes that are built into your kayak. And you can see right here the scupper hole and all i have coming out the bottom is the hose and the filter and that's it so it goes right up in there just like that it's as simple as that i didn't have to drill any holes i didn't have to widen scupper hole just slide the hose down in there and again use a bunny strap strap it down and it's that easy so the downside of these things which i have to be honest is you have to prime the pump the pump's supposed to come with fluid in it they try their best to ship with fluid in it, but if it sits or it's a bad shipping experience, the fluid comes out of it, and then you have to actually prime that pump, which can be a real pain in the ass when you're out on the water trying to prime this pump and get the, the bait well working. In this case, I actually could not get it primed, no matter what I did. So what they tell you to do at Wilderness is to take a garden hose and force water through that downpipe to prime that pump again. Once that pump is primed, it's supposed to hold the water and stay primed. So on my next trip, I'll find out if that's true or not before I recommend that. One last thing I added on this is called an anchor trolley system. This one I did drill holes in the boat. 
you have a pulley system right here. You have a guide right there. You have a D-ring right here. And then you have the controls right here. And the way this works is this locks and unlocks your line. So if I switch this forward, it's not going anywhere. Switch it back, I can move it. So the way that this works and the idea behind this is you got your little, in this case, I got a seven pound anchor right here. I can flip this around, show you guys here. And boom, you got your anchor. Throw that out in the water. It drops down. I just throw my excess line underneath here. It drops down and let's say you want the boat in the current to be facing backwards. So you want your butt facing down river. What you simply do is while you're sitting in it is just move your D-ring to the front of the boat. And obviously the opposite, if you want it to be in the back, you move it to the back. What that does is that creates the point that the anchor is going to be holding. So it's going to be pulling from right here. That makes sense. So in most cases in a river situation, you want to be facing downstream, facing your rods. So what you do is you actually trolley this all the way to the back of the boat, just like this. So now this is your anchor point back here and it's holding your boat so that it's facing down river. That's the idea behind it at least. I haven't had this on the river to test that out yet, but I've watched enough videos to say that's probably true. So then you just move the trolley back to where you want it, clip it in, lock it down, pretty easy. Now, you can't go without a landing. Strongly recommend whenever you're going on a kayak, to always have one of these. If there's something that's important to you, whether it's uh, some gear with a wallet or a phone in it, it doesn't hurt to strap it down. If you have a really expensive rod, I generally don't use really expensive rods, but if you do have really expensive rods, it's nothing to strap this on there in case the fish does take you down and uh, you can still retrieve your rod. So that's it, that's our new ride. We're gonna be trying this out in a couple spots that I can't get to with the boat and see what happens. So let me know if you like this, if you have any comments, for all you kayak fishermen out there, let me know what I'm missing, what I need to get. I don't know anything else I really want to get. I've got pretty much all the gear I could possibly want to put on this thing. It is about 100, 110 pounds now, right now. Um, and it seems to be working pretty good for me as far as lifting and putting it in the truck and pulling it out. So that's that. Now I'm going to get my gear together and I'm going to start my next video. I'm going to go down the river behind the house, the Elkhart River, and go after some smallmouth or whatever may bite. And let's see what happens. Talk to you guys again soon. Thanks for watching.